Or extraordinaire here just cutting into the video before I begin because for whatever reason when I was compiling the video um, I cut away to the tier list and it would not show me actually doing that in the tier list so it just awkwardly shows me talking over um, the game it's hum the humankind game itself and I think that's because I just could not tab out of the window or the recording software or wouldn't, wouldn't recognize that so I just wanted to show um, here's the complete tier list um, I'll just cut through the suspense unfortunately and this is how I'm ranking everything so I hope you enjoy the video uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys later all right Greetings hunter gatherers. My name is for extraordinaire and welcome to my humankind ancient cultures tier list Now this tier list is subject to change. I still have uh, Some testing to do with a few of the cultures Notably some of the more militaristic cultures if I haven't played them nearly as much as some of the other cultures So bear with me for a mem moment while I kind of describe these cultures and rank them uh, My rankings for the militarist cultures just as a warning ahead of time might be a bit iffy um, but regardless, I do want to talk about some of the cultures, um, talk about some of their uh, bonuses, their weaknesses, where some of them could be improved a lot, and uh, where some of them could be nerfed because they go a bit overboard. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, uh, please continue watching as I uh, explain and kind of break down the different cultures and do an in-depth look, look at those cultures. Alright, so the first culture I want to talk about is the Olmecs because they have a very, very interesting uh, bonus for natural harmony where they get plus one influence on territory and this by itself isn't too too powerful but once you start to sack territories later on I find um, it really comes into play after you kind of ascend as the Olmax you can really start to gain uh, some influence so the ability by itself uh, definitely gets stronger as you kind of go on now with the Olmec heads I find that the influence they grant is definitely powerful, though they were not as they're not as powerful as they were with the Lucy Open Dev, where I think they also add bonuses towards rivers, and it was kind of like with the Kume and their um, their unique emblematic quarter, where you just get tons of rivers, the beret, right? Um, where you just get tons of rivers and you can really stack their bonuses. So the Olmec head is definitely kind of middle of the road, though I find that the influence kind of really helps with um, getting the your outposts out early and the natural harmony kind of complements that now javelin throwers are definitely one of the weaker parts of the Olmex kits because their um, ambusher trait is only strong on forest tiles and the rest of their kit kind of doesn't really um, play too conducively to forest because you want to clear that stuff for farmland so you can place down Olmec heads and kind of place down farms next to the Olmec heads so the javelin throwers are definitely one of the weaker units um, so with that, I think I'll go ahead and rank them, just kind of giving my um, justifications and explaining them. So I think for the actual ranking itself, it's only fair to probably put them around C tier, maybe a C plus tier, um, just because they definitely struggle a little bit early on, um, kind of with their javelin. It's not nearly as strong as some of the other kits. Um, so I definitely think a C tier is appropriate for the Olmax just in terms of ranking them. All right, next we have the Phoenicians, and the Phoenicians are definitely a controversial one because they have a very, very awkward play style where you're only really going to be wanting, wanting to play the Phoenicians if you are playing um, on the coast. And the Haven is kind of a doozy, though. Let me explain their bonus here, their affinity, trading pioneers, as they get plus two money per traders on city or outpost. Again, this is kind of like with the Olmex, where initially it's not too strong, but later on, once you get more traders, it starts to really come into effect, though I would say that plus two money um, for the ancient era, that's not really what you're looking for. Um, you're probably looking for food and production. So the Phoenicians as a merchant culture, they definitely lag behind. The Byreem is also um, a bit of a burden, especially um, on less naval heavy maps because you're not really gonna be using it too much in the ancient era, probably only to really explore. And it's not like there's um, too many curiosities out in like coastal waters for you to kind of make use of the Byreem. Uh, and then we finally have the Haven and the Haven, um, yeah, definitely a bit of a doozy because it acts as a farmer's quarter and it acts as a market's quarter, a market's quarter. Um, but the big problem with the Haven is that you actually don't get it until you research fishing. Um, and that actually comes kind of a bit late down in the tech tree. If I can just go ahead and show you, I'm actually, um, I haven't selected the culture yet. But once you select that culture, um, fishing is qu quite a bit down in the tech tree so it is a bit hard to get that haven up and running and even then um, the production to kind of build that haven uh, definitely is a bit costly so it's going to be a while before their bonuses kick in 
and furthermore their bonuses uh, by themselves aren't too good like with trading pioneers at least not until later on and then their unique emblematic unit is weak by itself just because uh, you're not going to be doing too much naval stuff uh, early on so that's kind of my reasoning there so now that I kind of outlined the Phoenicians, let me just go ahead and rank them. I think it'll probably they'll probably be the only D tier culture just because it's very, very hard to get a start up and running with them. And because of that, I think D tier is an appropriate um, ranking for them, especially considering all the other stuffs um, and grievances I've listed. All right, next we have the Zhou, and they are one of the stronger cultures. We've talked about the Olmec, we've talked about the Phoenicians, and those are definitely on the weaker end of the spectrum. But I find that the Zhou can be very, very strong, especially with harmonious uh, thought. It comes into play um, fairly soon, and then it, you can kind of build on it and compound it with other um, cultures when you start going down um, later eras. I also find the Confucian School to be one of their strongest tools because um, this is situational, but um, if you get the Confucian School and you get a really, really good mountain chain, this one's kind of crappy and pathetic. But if you get a very, very good mountain chain as the Zhou, if you're getting like plus three mountains and you can uh, place your Confucian School down next to those mountains, you can get potentially up to uh, plus 15, plus 20 science. You could theoretically get like plus 30 science, I believe. Um, that's like six or um, plus 25 science if you really max your mountains out um, with six mountain tiles. So the Confucian school is nothing to laugh at, though the Zhanche definitely comes a lot later on, though it can still be very powerful if you have the Mandate of Heaven. And Harmonious Thought uh, synchronizes very well with that. So does the Confucian school because it grants stability. So overall, I found that the Zhou are very, very... Um, good at kind of synergizing with their other abilities and their toolkits and because of that I definitely um, rank them a lot higher than the Olmecs and the Phoenicians. So because of all those things I definitely would uh, say ranking them at B tier is more than fair. They're above average though if you do not get mountains as the Zhou they definitely do struggle a bit. Alright next on the tier list is the Assyrians and they are the only expansionist culture for the ancient era. I've had quite a few gripes with the Assyrians. I even made a video about it in the past. Though, the Assyrians, I think my main problem with them is that the Dunu is a bit lackluster and that they are very military, uh, militarist focused for an expansionist culture. Uh, let's take a look at their abilities as I don't have too much experience with them. I've played them, but my experience with them um, is not nearly as extensive as with the Olmecs and the Zhou. So for Raid Masters, they get plus one land movement speed on bonus, which just a flat out plus one land movement speed is very, very good. And then they also get plus five combat strength bonus when ransacking on army, which I find to be very, very good because you're gonna be raiding a lot with the Assyrian raiders and they generate additional money when destroying an outpost or independent camps. So as the Assyrians, you wanna harass your nearby neighbors, make sure they don't build outposts and you will also profit off of that with the Assyrian raiders. So all in all, those two are very, very strong parts of the kit. However, I do find that the Danu with the plus two influence is very, very lackluster. You're not gonna be building it early on. Um, and because of that, you're probably not going to see that uh, too much with the Assyrians. Um, plus 2 influence, nothing really too big. Uh, plus 10 district fortification, again, you're going to be going on the offensive. You're not going to be using this as a de defensive district too much. And then the plus 1 combat strength and combat for uh, units in or adjacent to the district, um, not too strong, again, as you aren't going to be defending too much. If I had to improve this, I would just lean into their expansionist affinity and give them like plus five influence for the Danu or something a lot stronger. Uh, maybe some bonuses to kind of theming it next to districts like the Stupa that the Moria have. Um, I just find that the Danu is very, very underwhelming. However, I will say that the Raid Masters bonus and the Assyrian Raiders couple very, very well together as you're getting super fast cavalry. They hit fairly hard. They hit harder than the Scout Riders, I believe. And they're very, very good at pillaging and getting you money uh, early on. So with all that said, I do have to recommend um, the Assyrians if you are going for a more aggressive play style. So I would say I'd probably put the Assyrians at the weaker end of B tier. I think the Zhou probably do the Assyrians job um, just a little bit better in terms of being more well-rounded. And I think that the um, Zhan Che Chariot just does a bit better of a job in terms of its offensive pressure. Though I will say that the Assyrians are very, very good just early on, again, racking up that gold and maybe generating a little influence on the side as well as stealing some territories. 
All right, next on the list is the Babylonians, and they do pack a punch. Uh, first of all, they have brilliant philosophers, plus two science per research technologies on the capital, and that really, really stacks. They also have the astronomy house, plus three science per adjacent farmer's quarter, and then plus one food per researchers, plus one science per researchers, and then plus one researchers slot. So basically, um, your researchers are going to be doing uh, a job fulfilling basically the farmer's job as you can uh, accumulate food as the researchers. And then to top that off, to make the astronomy house worthwhile, as if it's already not good and beefy, um, you're going to be getting, uh, it, it's gonna be counting as a farmer's quarter and a research quarter. So the astronomy house is a very, very solid, probably one of the best emblematic quarters you have, um, just because it really fulfills its roles well. And you can sacrifice um, your production to kind of get this uh, pseudo research quarter, farmer's quarter out early on while not really uh, lagging behind and also getting your research up which is very very important early on as the Babylonians. You also have the Sabu Sakashi, probably the least impressive um, portion of their kit as I find they come a bit late. You also do need copper to kind of get them out but they are very very good at defending so um, as the Babylonians when you want to hoard your science and kind of turtle the Sabu Sakashi are pretty good at covering covering your flank. And then again, I find that Brilliant Philosophers is really, really good at stacking technologies, um, kind of once you go above and beyond as the Babylonians to the classical and even medieval era. So with all that said, I think the Babylonians, it's only fair to put them in an A tier. I don't find them to have too many weaknesses. They're very, very good at just going wide. Um, and also they can have the option to go tall, just um, spread out with your, um, your unique emblematic district. Um, cultivate your technologies and just make sure you defend well with your Sabu Sakashi to really um, kind of round your flaws out. All right, we're almost halfway through the, through the tier list and we have the Egyptians and boy, do the Egyptians pack a punch. Let me just t tell you about why uh, the Egyptians are just so, so potent. You probably hear um, the community talking a lot about them because they are just so, so powerful. Um, first off, they have grand planners, plus one industry on tile producing industry. So if I have, let me just go over here. If I have a few tiles over here producing industry, I'm just already going to compound them and get plus one industry extra. So that's already gonna be like potentially plus six industry extra um, with your first district exploitation if you know what you're doing um, second of all they have the Egyptian pyramid which is very very good at doing a couple of things it's very good at racking up influence you get plus one influence um, which by itself isn't too impressive but coupled with plus three industry and then plus three industry per adjacent makers quarter um, as well as the fact that it counts as a makers quarter is very very good um, especially since you're going to be exploiting more tiles for your industry as the grand planner so you can potentially get up to like plus 20 industry with one egyptian pyramid which is very very insane uh, early on and then you also have the Markabata not too too impressive But they are very very good at kind of getting around the battlefield and then pelting your enemy Just very very consistent and very very solid uh, as the Egyptians I find that they are one of the cultures that are probably the most versatile they can take most starts uh, Even this one which doesn't have too many mountains to work with um, it's not too uh, prime for makers quarters, but even starts like this isolated island starts are, are fine with the Egyptians just because they are so versatile with their uh, makers quarter bonuses and they are also um, Just very very solid and consistent at slowly expanding and accumulating a lot of industry So because of that, I think I definitely want to rank the Egyptians as S tier. They're just very very consistent They're not like Overpowered to the point where they just dominate every single start I've ever had um, but they are very, very consistent. I definitely think they are S tier just because of some of the bonuses I've listed. Okay, next are the Harappans, and these are probably the AI's favorite culture. I rarely ever get to pick the Harappans just because the AI love their food bonuses so much. Let's talk about some of their food bonuses really quickly because I think they are probably um, the most powerful, uh, cla not classical era, but the most powerful ancient era uh, culture when it comes to generating food. Fertile inundations is very good for rivers because it generates plus one food on tile producing food and then plus one food on rivers. So since rivers are almost always producing food, you're going to get something like plus two food out of that river immediately, which is very, very good for um, growing that initial population. You also have the canal network, which is also very good at growing um, your early population because it grants plus three food. Uh, it grants plus three food per adjacent farmer's quarters, and then it generates plus one farmer's slot and it counts as a farmer's quarter, of course. 
course. Um, so it's actually very, very similar to the uh, Egyptian pyramid in terms of the yields that's popping out, but it's also very, very good in the synergy it uh, presents later on with the Kume if you have a very, very good river start because this counts as a river so you can couple it um, with irrigation and some of those other techs along with the Grand Beret, which is very, very powerful. However, one of the very, very, um, probably one of the best early emblematic units um, are at the Hrapin's disposal, and those are the runners. And the runners um, are very good because not only are they stronger than the scouts, but I believe they also, I don't think this is being shown um, below, but they also grant, get extra food from curiosities, I believe, or extra gold from curiosities. I don't know if they changed that, but I thought that was a bonus. I think it's being hidden by the, um, the little bar or UI down here. So I'm pretty sure they still retain that bonus, but the runners, again, very, very strong. They get out early, they get a lot of gold, and they're just very good at racking up and starting your economy and just being able to buy things out to kind of um, get your canal to networks out and up and, and up and running. So because of that, I definitely have to rank the Harappans at A tier. I think they're very, very good at accumulating food early on. And because of that, because food and population are just so, so important in the early game in humankind, I think A tier is an appropriate ranking for them. Okay, we have three cultures left, and I do have to say the Hittites have a pretty damn good uh, robe. I really like that gold and that blue going on along with the white. Anyhow, we are not ranking robes. We're going to be ranking their abilities, and I think the Hittites are pretty solid. Uh, probably my least played culture, though I do want to comment on them just very briefly. Uh, they have the Lust for War, and that's going to be a flat-out plus-one combat strength. Uh, it's not going to help out too much early on. You're not going to be um, getting a massive army. Uh, that soon but it's going to help out uh, later on when you start getting armies of like six units and that plus one combat strength becomes six combat strength um, very very scary you also have the awari which automatically upgrades the regular outpost and it's kind of like a mini city uh, and basically this is a spawn point for um, land units so it's going to be very very uh, consistent kind of at just pumping out your gears and all of your other units um, the Gagir is also interesting because it has the suppression ability, and that means uh, targeted units cannot move next turn, so it kind of has a little zone of control. Though the only thing kind of holding the Gagir back is that they require uh, horses, and I believe they also require copper or iron. I'm not too sure which one of that. I think it's copper, um, but very, very solid. They kind of act like um, a proto-hun in terms of just racking up um, kills early on, generating a huge population and using that to kind of terrorize uh, nearby cities and uh, unsuspecting ancient era cultures. So because of that, I think I would probably put them somewhere around the B plus tier, though since I don't have that tier, um, I definitely just, I'll just go ahead and put them in the A tier. All right, and next on the proverbial chopping block, we have the Mycenaeans, and boy, um, I haven't seen more of an overtuned sieve, perhaps, um, they're even more so overtuned than the Egyptians just because of their um, crazy bonuses they get. Uh, so they have brutal upbringing. They get uh, cheaper unit industry costs. Uh, minus 20% is nothing to scoff at. They also get plus 25 experience on creating units on city or out cities or outposts. So basically, um, the units you're creating, they're going to be a lot stronger. Uh, they have the Cyclopean Fortress, and you get plus 20 district fortification, plus 3 industry, plus 15 stability, and then plus 3 combat strength and combat for units in or adjacent to the district. So this is all in all just a much better um, Danu that the Assyrians have. It just gets you industry, it gets you stability, and it's just going to be relevant um, going later on into um, the classical and medieval eras. You also have um, increasing the movement cost of hostile armies. So not only is this very good, at um, getting your units out, giving you some industry, but it's also a great defensive district. And then finally, to top it off, we have the Promakoi, and the Promakoi are very, very good at attacking first um, and just attacking like lightning fast, doing a Blitzkrieg, doing a ton of damage, and then um, hiding back behind your Cyclopean fortresses. So the, the Mycenaeans are very, very good at one thing, and that is war. Um, if you have this, if you have an early war, you want to start um, and kind of engage in with the enemy and do some serious damage. The Mycenaeans are very, very consistent at that. Uh, the Cyclopean Fortress gets you your industry really early on, and it provides stability later on for kind of stacking up districts. And then brutal upbringing is going to be very, very consistent at just constantly um, giving you cheap units that are very well trained. 
And because of that, I do have to rank the Mycenaeans as the second S tier culture, just because of the reasons I explained. They're not too good, um, perhaps at industry or uh, generating influence or generating um, food, but they are very, very good at just wreaking havoc and doing tons of damage to the enemy and just flipping their shit. All right, the final culture we have here are the Nubians, and they might be one of my favorite cultures just because um, of their Golden Dreams ability. And the Golden Dreams ability grants them plus five money on luxury and strategic resource depots. And while this doesn't seem too, too intimidating at first, it is very, very consistent with generating tons of money early on. And if you have a lot of strategic resource depots, I don't think this start has too many of them, but if you have a lot of strategic resource depots, even horses count, uh, you can really get a ton of gold up and running and that helps with kind of starting your empire and kickstarting a lot of di your district buyouts. Also, they have the Meroe Pyramids, which aren't too bad. They generate plus two industry, plus two money, um, and they count as market quarters and they count as maker's quarters. So early on, since you don't have access to the uh, markets or the, make the uh, maker's uh, you have access to the maker's quarters, but you don't have access to the market quarters. So um, because of that, the Maroe pyramids are very good at generating your money, uh, coupled with golden dreams, and you're just going to have a very, very consistent early economy, probably better than a lot of the rivaling neighbors. Also, you have the Test City Archers, and the uh, Test City Archers are very, very good um, at shooting without needing a clear line of sight, just due to their exceptional accuracy. And I find that they're very um, just consistent early on, and um, they're a lot better than the kind of generic archer unit that you have access to uh, starting as soon as you get, I think, city defense or something like carpentry. So this has been my little tier list for the cultures here for humankind. Let me just quickly rank the Nubians. I'm just going to go ahead and put them at B tier just because they're very consistent with golden dreams and everything. But anyway, this has been my early on, my uh, early tier list for humankind's ancient cultures. This will change as the cultures are tweaks. Um, but for right now, um, with the like 1.1 beta patch or whatever, this is my current tier list. I think the cultures right now are fairly balanced, though there are definitely a few changes I would make to cultures like the Phoenicians. I'd probably make their um, havens a bit more um, stronger and just make them accessible to the Phoenicians right out of the gate. Um, but yeah, there's a few changes I definitely make. Um, but for now, I would say that the cultures are very good at what they do, and they all have a unique play style, which is very, very um, great to see. So if you guys like this kind of content in this video, this has been Four Extraordinaire, and if you um, yeah, if you like it, leave, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and uh, I should have more humankind content coming out to you guys. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys later. All right, peace.